In today's video, I'm diving into some physiology that just might save your life. We're talking about immersion pulmonary edema, IPO or IPE for those of us Americans. Seriously, if you're over 40, smoke, are overweight, or you know you have high blood pressure, watch this video. Even if you feel like you're at the peak of your health, watch this video. All divers need to know this stuff. Vamanos. so cute today. Got my little cute top on. I'm gonna talk about life and death situations. Scuba. If you're here, hopefully you have filled out the medical form once or twice in your diving career. And with that, I hope you know some of the risks that are involved with scuba diving as a sport. It's pretty commonly known that heart-related issues rank the highest among scuba diving accidents. Because scuba diving is such an accessible adventure sport, a lot of people are doing it who maybe wouldn't do other sports. The interesting thing about immersion pulmonary edema is that it can happen to anyone regardless of physical appearances because it's known as a silent killer. So let's talk about it. IPE can occur anytime a person is in water, especially cold water, exerting themselves or under stress and has above normal blood pressure or other heart related issues. Now I say it can occur when a person is in water because it doesn't just specifically go with scuba diving. It's any time a human being gets in the water with these pre-existing conditions or stressors. Let's simplify things. Our heart and lungs work together to bring in oxygen through inhalation and take out waste, carbon dioxide, through exhalation. And at the tiniest level, this all happens at the alveoli in the lungs. When we get into water, pressure in the pulmonary capillaries at the alveoli where the gas exchange happens increases. So if you already have hypertension, pressure is compounded basically. This increase in pressure can push liquid into the alveoli, which remember is part of the lungs and will give the person or the diver the sensation that they can't catch a breath or that they're drowning. This is a really important rescue diver note. If you see someone who's indicating that they're out of breath and they continue to struggle even when you give them your alternate regulator, immersion pulmonary edema could be the issue. That being said, anytime anyone is having issues with breathing, we get them to the surface, no messing around. But in this scenario, because the diver could be hypoxic, which means that they don't have enough oxygen in their body, this adds another level to your rescue as you ascend. When we ascend, we have less pressure, right? Which means that the partial pressure of gases in our tissues also decreases. So if a diver is hypoxic, they may be conscious at depth, but as we go up towards the surface, the partial pressure of oxygen could drop low enough that they pass out. That means if you have a diver who's responding and reacting in this way, you want to actually have pressure on their regulator and maybe a little, you know, hook under their jaw to be able to open airways to make sure that the diver doesn't lose the regulator if they do happen to pass out. Now I'm showing this as if you're facing the diver because in this scenario, I would probably face the diver so that I could keep an eye on how they're doing and how they're reacting as long as they're not panicking. We always want to assess our diver. If they start to panic, being right face to face is not a good place to be. But if they're just trying to catch a breath with you and they're looking at you and they're focused and then they pass out, you're going to be able to respond quicker if you're looking them in the face. Regardless if they pass out or not, when you get them to the surface, you want to make sure that they stay upright. So do not lay them down. You want to keep them warm. Do not give them any liquid. Administer oxygen and get them to emergency medical services. All right, I know that sounds scary, but let's just focus on the fact that knowledge is power. So let's talk about who's at risk. Normal blood pressure is accepted to be between 90 over 60 and 120 over 80. Hypertension can be kind of hard to pin down because one-off readings are not reliable 
reliable. A lot of times if we get our blood pressure taken at the doctor, we're more stressed out. None of us really like going to the doctor or you've had caffeine or whatever. There's a lot of stuff that affects our blood pressure because hypertension can be asymptomatic. A lot of people will go around with higher than normal blood pressure and not realize that they could be at risk for this. For a long time, actually, there was an article in Dan a little over 10 years ago where they sort of wrote this off as being a non-issue to divers. But as time has gone on and they've done more research, it's proving to be quite a big issue in the diving world. Now they're revisiting past accidents and thinking that IPE could actually be a factor. So that's why we talk about it because if we know that we're at that higher range, we can do something about it. We can start taking our fitness a little bit more seriously. We can change our diet. We can go on medication. There are lots of options out there for us. Because we're understanding IPE a little bit better and it seems that it's having a higher impact on the diving community than we previously thought, the warning levels for hypertension are getting more conservative. Now, if you average a blood pressure of 135 over 85, or up, it's advised that you talk to your doctor about hypertension solutions. It's kind of crazy to think about that because normal levels are just barely under that, at the high end of the range at least. That's how seriously doctors are taking this now. This isn't to say that high blood pressure takes you out of the diving game altogether. It does, however, give you information about the risk involved if you decide to get in the water for any water activity, not just diving. Improving your overall health, choosing appropriate dive sites, and getting medicinal support can decrease your risks. The more you know. And we all want scuba diving to be less risky, right? We want to enjoy our time in the water. And I, for one, do not want to have an accident. And I don't want to have to rescue someone. We learn the rescue skills for emergencies, but we really want to take all of the precautions we can so that we don't have to use those skills. That's the sign of a good rescue diver. Anyway, you know the drill. Like, leave your questions in the comments below, subscribe for more videos. Want access to the Asul Scuba community? Join me on Patreon. Links in the description below. Okay, love you, bye. There's no real reason for having a tank here other than I wanted to have some company for the video. I feel like I should give it a name. This is my right tank. What do you think right tank should be called? Scrappy? <laughs> I don't know why that came to mind. Tell me what you think my right tank should be called in the comments below. Maybe that's a thing. I could name my tanks. Mwah. We'll get you a name. <laughs> I think I might be lonely. <laughs>